Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is part two for Ariel Kiss the Dress costume. This will be the shirt, the bodice, and the hair bow. To make a pattern, I go ahead and take my mannequin and I put saran wrap on it and then I cover it with masking tape. And the reason why I'm showing you on the little one is because I already did the big one and forgot to film it. Plus, I'm also making my daughter one as I make the adult version as well. And once that's covered, I go ahead and draw my pattern. I do make up one side of this masking tape concoction as the shirt, and I do make the other side the bodice. And once that's drawn out, I go ahead and make my seam lines where I need them, and cut the pattern off my dress form, and cut it up into pieces. And with those pieces, I make a mock-up and do any alterations as far as fit goes. And then I have my pattern right here. I bought this pretty light blue shirting twill material from the fashion district in Dallas a while back. And it is non-stretched, so I will have to add a closure to the back of this and some darts to fit it properly. My shirt on the front consists of two darts, one on each side of the body underneath the bust. Since the bodice or the corset will cover those darts. Um, I do not have to worry about how pretty they look. I cut the back into two pieces because I wanted it as fitted to the body as possible since Ariel's shirt from the movie is fitted. And the sleeves are long sleeves with a little ballooning or puffing around the wrist. So I made a long sleeve and I made it wider at the wrist than what I normally would. And I have a fitted cuff that goes around that ballooning after I gather it that I made sure that my wrist and hand would be able to go through. And this is the shape of the sleeve that I cut out. And from the mock-up, I go ahead and mark where my darts are on the front of the shirt and pin those together. And like I said, this material is not stretched whatsoever, so I will be adding a little snap closure on the back, uh, up at the neck. The wig will hide it so I don't have to worry about anybody seeing that closure. And for the back of the shirt, it is in two pieces. Underneath the armpit is one piece and then the back is another. I go ahead and pin those two pieces together. And if I were to make this shirt again, I would just go ahead and buy some knit material, some stretching material just to make the shirt a lot easier. For the bodice slash corset, I do buy some navy blue poly cotton for the lining layer, the middle layer, and the outer layer. And the outer layer I do cover with a blue a sort of chiffon material. It's a mesh material. So with this bodice I do cut out four layers for this.
And with all the pieces cut out, I go ahead and sew the darts together on the front of the shirt. And then I go ahead and sew the back pieces together. And once the darts are done and the back pieces are sewn together, I do go ahead and match up the shoulders and sew those together as well. And with those on, I do go ahead and close up the back seam. However, I leave about a six to eight inch gap at the top. And at this time, I do not have the side seams closed yet. With the sleeve, I go ahead and unpin it from the pattern and I attach it to the armholes. And with this shirt, I have a serger, so I do not need to line any of this shirt. So I just serge all the edges. And with the arm pinned on, I go ahead and sew that together. And once both arms are sewn on, I go ahead and match up where the seams are, where the armpits are match it up and I sew it all the way from the wrist all the way down to the hem of the shirt. Also since I do have a serger and you're not going to see the bottom of this shirt because I'm going to tuck it into the skirt, I do not give it a hem but I serge it. For the cuff I go ahead and sew up the side seam. And then for the shirt portion, I gather where the wrist is all the way down to the size of the cuff and attach the cuff to that gathering. And with the cuff attached, I go ahead and roll the rest of that material inside and fold it down and hand stitch it down to the shirt. So that way the raw edges are encased. To finish the closure and the neckline of the shirt, I go ahead and roll the back seam in on itself and stitch it down.
and to finish the neckline and make it nice and clean I did find some bias tape in the matching color and just encase that neckline in that bias tape. And for the closure in the back, I attached one sew-on snap. And the shirt is done. For the bodice corset, uh, the first thing I did was unpin the first layer and the mesh layer of the bodice and then I went ahead and attached those two pieces together on the side. I am pretty much making the mesh material and the first layer of the polycotton as one. And once the mesh material and the first layer of polycotton are all connected on each piece, I go ahead and pin those pieces together and sew them together. And this bodice does consist of six panels. And then once the first layer is done, I go ahead and do the same thing to the middle layer and the lining itself. And once the middle layer is all done and attached, this will hold my boning channels. So I go ahead and give it a good press and press all of those seam allowances down. 
And for the curvier bits of this, I go ahead and use my tailor's ham to make sure all the seam allowances are pressed down. And to give myself a guide of how long each boning channel needs to do, on the bottom of the lining middle layer, I measure out three quarters of an inch up and make a mark. And then on the top part, I do a half inch. This line will make sure that my boning and boning channels are not in the actual seam allowance of the box. To make the boning channels, I am using that same bias tape I used on the shirt and attaching them all along the seam allowances and I do add another one in the middle of the bodice for the point structure and also one on each end of this lining material for the uh, ties. And once I get all the boning channels in, I go ahead and actually use some heavy duty zip ties, the long ones I got from Lowe's, and those will actually be my bones. And I go ahead and curve the ends of each one and measure them to size and, and make sure I curve each edge so that way it does not rip through the fabric. With all the bones in their casings, I go ahead and sew all along that top edge to make sure that they do not fall out of the casing. And with that, I can go ahead and attach it to the front of the bodice itself. This layer with the bones in it will be enclosed in the lining and the front bodice. So it's your choice of how you want your bones facing, if you want them facing out to the front or you want them facing into the body. And when attaching this, I make sure that I line up all the seam allowances between the two pieces and then I will sew them on the top and sew it on the bottom. And to make sure nothing slides, I start sewing from the middle of the bodice out to the edge and then I flip it over and do the same thing to the other side.
And now I, once that is one piece, I go ahead and attach the lining material. And I do right side to right side, sew it along the top and sew it along the bottom. And I do exactly the same thing. I start in the middle of the bodice, work my way out to the end, and then flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And once that's sewn together, I go ahead and clip the points and I clip the curves and then flip it right side out. To finish the edges, I go ahead and fold the open edges in on itself and then I top stitch that down. I do go ahead and top stitch the entire bodice down. For the mesh material, I cannot iron because it will melt. And I top stitch it to make sure the lining does not show from the front. And if you do this, make sure you take really good care about that bone on the edge then you can sew through it, but it's not recommended. For the lacings, I did not want grommets, however later on after I did this I did not like the way it looked and I would have probably preferred the grommets. But anyways, I took some cording and I went ahead and made loops and sewed it to the back of the corset. And I do apologize that I'm out of frame, I did not realize this. but I was able to get 10 loops on each side of the corset and then I went ahead and sewed those loops into place. And with that, I wanted to go ahead and kind of add a little bit of lace to the back of the corset. So I have this navy blue lace that I went ahead and sewed two layers to each side. And with that, the bodice and shirt is done. Now it's time for the hair bow. And from the reference images that I have, the bow is the same color as the shirt. So I used that same twill shirting material and cut my squares from it or I should say rectangles. The bow determines on how big you want to make it. In the reference image, it's, it's a bit oversized. 
So I cut my big rectangle uh, 24 inches by 13 inches. I cut the tie rectangle 3 inches by 12 inches. And the middle loop, I just cut a 2 inch strip and just made it really long because I was not sure how long I was going to need it. But at the end, I used about a 5 to 6 inch strip of it. And for the, the structure of the bow to make sure it doesn't flop down, I did use some iron on interfacing. And here I am ironing it on. Once I get it ironed on, I do go ahead and fold it in half lengthwise. So now it's half its size and iron it down. And then I will sew it down, leaving a hole in the middle of it. That way I can flip it right side out. And for this, I do clip the corners to make sure I get nice crisp points. And to make sure those points are nice and crisp, I go ahead and use my own point turners that I 3D printed. And I do not have to close up that hole since it will be hidden in the bow. For the strips or ribbon itself and the middle part of the bow, I go ahead and do the same exact thing. I'll leave a hole in the middle so I can flip it out. And again, I use my point turners to make sure I get nice crisp edges. And if you would like a set of these point turners, I will leave a link in the description box below where you can purchase them. Now it's assembly time. I go ahead and take the big square now and I accordion fold it up and I use a needle and thread to hold it together and then I take the rest of the thread and I wrap it around that middle part so that way it stays together With the ribbon part, I go ahead and sew it in the middle and attach it to the bow. For the smaller rectangle, I go ahead and use my hot glue gun and hot glue the edge to the back of the bow. Wrap it around as tight as I can get it and hot glue it to itself. I do reinforce this with thread later on after I attach the clip to it. And once that's all hot glued together, I go ahead and hot glue the clip to it. And then I do sew the clip and all that together because I was not sure if the hot glue would actually stay. And I am selling these hair bows in adult sizes and child sizes. If you would like to purchase one, I will leave a link to the shop below. And with that, the dress is done. I think it came out better than I expected. There are a few things that I would do differently, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next week. Bye!